Welcome to Insight. Today we are chatting with Mike Curtin, Chief Executive Officer of DC Central Kitchen. DC Central Kitchen is America's leader in fighting poverty, hunger, and poor health through recycled food, culinary job training, and healthy school food programs. Mike has generously agreed to share some of his experience with us. I'd like to thank you, Mike, for joining us today. Thank you for the opportunity. So DC Central Kitchen is such an interesting concept. Talk about its genesis and, and the mission that it serves today. Well, the kitchen was born out of uh, a rather frustrating and, and I think disappointing volunteer experience that our founder, Robert Egger, had many, many years ago. Uh, he went out with a group uh, of folks from a church, well-intentioned, um, you know, good in their hearts, uh, feeding people on the streets. Uh, but what he saw were, or what he learned was these same folks were coming back to this same truck for the same sandwich and coffee week after week, month after month, year after year. And, and he started thinking that maybe this whole, the way we've been approaching the charity situation in America was really more about the redemption of the giver as opposed to the liberation of the receiver. And so Robert wanted to create a system where it was really based on liberating people, uh, not feeding more people, but but shortening the line by the way we were feeding it, and giving people an opportunity to live lives of self-sufficiency and not just putting a Band-Aid on a symptom. So it's a change in, in sensibility from understanding that the need today might also be a need tomorrow, might be a need for the next day, to create a circumstance in which you are supplying a need, but also addressing a problem at the same time. A absolutely. And I think Unfortunately, much of the charity that's happened in this country for the last 70 or 80 years has been focused on symptoms. Uh, at the kitchen, we use food as a tool uh, to strengthen bodies, empower minds, and build communities, but it's the tool. We understand that even though we're doing 10,000 meals a day in the greater D.C. area, people will be hungry tomorrow. Food will never end hunger. We're not going to feed our way out of hunger. What we're after is breaking this very dis uh, destructive and generational cycle of addiction, violence, incarceration, homelessness, hunger, and ultimately poverty. That's really what we have to go after. But it's also not ignoring the short-term need in, in favor of a long-term solution. It's actually dealing with, with both tracks. A absolutely. And, and, and again, the, the feeding programs that exist, food banks, absolutely necessary. The meals that we do, absolutely necessary but we can't kid ourselves into thinking that that's going to solve the problem. So talk about the difference that that insight made in terms of how your programs were actually delivered on a day-to-day -day basis. Well, the, there, there are several ways. Uh, one really basic and, and fundamental piece of what we do, and an area, quite frankly, where some people part ways with our methodology is that every agency that receives food from us signs a contract, and that contract says the money you will save because we're providing you food for free or for very low cost will be reinvested in your programs and services to empower and liberate your clients, or we're going to take our food somewhere else. Now, that's not something we want to do, we like to do, or quite frankly, we do very often, but we do feel that we have the carrot and the stick, and if we don't use both of those effectively and efficiently and purposefully, then we're just perpetuating the problem. We don't want to enable the, the, the issues that we're dealing with, we want to empower others, whether those are individuals or organizations, to change those circumstances. And how specific do those agreements get? Do you actually get down to um, the, the value of, of certain meals and then you, do you actually talk about what the funds are that need to be redirected well, to? We, we do talk about the value of the meals and, and more often than not it's significantly larger than most people imagine. Uh, but that whole process isn't I mean, isn't terribly scientific, um, right. but we do have a staff member whose entire job it is is to visit these agencies, talk with their clients, talk with the staff, uh, first to make sure we're doing what we're supposed to do and they're pleased with what we're offering, but also to make sure they're doing what they're supposed to do. So what we try to do when we see a program, take an after-school program for kids, for example, this happened a while ago when um, we visited a, a, a center and uh, the carpet was sort of ripped up and a bit moldy, paint was peeling off the walls, there was bookshelves but no books, there was basketballs but no air in the basketballs, and we said, look, th this isn't working out and we need to see some changes. 
here are three other organizations that we work with that are doing good things. Here are some suggestions we have. Um, let us know if we can help, and we'll come back in 30 days and see how you're doing. So really, we're try again, we're trying to push, again, not trying to punish, we're trying to push people forward into a better position to do their jobs. But there's also the implication that if you come back and the air isn't in the, in the basketballs and kids can't be playing and, and, and the and the carpet is such that it's that it's a danger and it's 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 um, depressing. Absolutely. At a certain point, you're going to say this is it. Yes, and and we've done that. And again, it's not something we like to do, but we feel that um, it, we're we're just not making progress if we don't. Uh, and and again, we're in a unique position to be able to work as a colleague with these folks, not as a someone who's managing their program or supervising their program or funding their program from a, a direct grant perspective, but, but colleagues working together to try to create better solutions. It's an interesting model that you're taking the business-to-business -business sensibility because you are a business-to-business -business service provider. You're not as much an end-user service provider anymore. Right. And you are taking a nonprofit take on the business-to-business -business relationship. You are a business partner and you want to have good relations, but you require certain behaviors from your business partners just as they require certain behaviors from you. Uh, exactly, and that really expands into all areas of DC Central Kitchen. But as far as this one in particular is concerned, uh, again, the, the sector, the nonprofit sector, social service sector in particular, we think, for many years has allowed itself to be thought of as very much secondary. The, 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 you know, the cute little kids in the corner of the room that uh, say, give us your pennies, we'll solve your dollar problems. That doesn't work. And not requiring of its leaders the high degree of professionalism, attention to detail, quality assurance, and so on. And, and, and you're, you're taking a different approach to your own work and to the work that right. you engage with your partners. Well, we, we can't. I don't believe as a sector say that we want to be taken more seriously. We don't want to be thought of as charity. We want to be thought of as economic development. We want to be thought of as, as business. If we, in turn, don't provide those same kinds of outcomes and outputs and, and metrics uh, that, that businesses do. So those kinds of things are really, really important to us. And, and, and I believe to the, sec to the health of the sector in general in, 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 into the future. Uh, the, there really has to be this different mindset when we're approaching uh, th these, these, these incredible problems that we're facing that either we don't want to face or, or others are opting not to. And this is our role, but we have to take this seriously and we can't say doing good is enough. It, it's not and, and it hasn't worked yet and we really have to continue to push forward together uh, to show the impact that the sector has in our communities uh, and see our work not as charity but as an investment in the future of our communities and our country. What are the measures of impact, uh, metrics of success as it were, do you follow and do you require a, a, as evidence that you are having the impact that you would wish to have? Well, it, it varies. Uh, we, we work with all kinds of agencies. We don't classify or qualify or quantify hunger, whether it's children's hunger, senior hunger. Uh, we work with programs that are uh, recovery program. So how many people are have graduated from your program and have remained clean and sober? Reentry programs. How many people have gotten jobs? Uh, GED programs. How many students have gotten GEDs? Uh, internally for us, a lot of the work that we look at is with our own culinary job training program. Uh, and so that's really when we turn the empowerment model in on ourselves and say we just you know, feeding isn't where we want to stop. Uh, training is our next step, uh, and we are closely tracking our, the, the success of the students while they're in the program, uh, post-graduation, uh, and, and not just jobs, but with their families, with their housing situations, uh, other metrics that you can look at, and we're always exploring more, and we're not nearly as far down the road as I would like us to be. Um, but there are certain ways where you can, you can look at the economic, again, the economic impact that individuals are having after they've gotten out. So talk about your culinary training and your job training programs in general and how those are administered. Well, the, the, the culinary job training program was always part of the model. Uh, again, we realized that feeding is not going to be enough. We need to empower people to put them on a path to self-sufficiency. 
So when we originally started the kitchen, we were using food that was left over predominantly from restaurants, hotels, and caterers, right. re-preparing that, putting that out into the community in a meaningful way, and then w using that food in that preparation time to train men and women who were in that food line for meaningful jobs in that restaurant. So really closing that, that circle. And over the years, that has expanded, and, and it remains still the, the central theme of DC Central Kitchen. And every community has food service uh, restaurants, preparers, organizations, institutions. So it is a ready uh, place of, of for employment. The, 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 and and the, on, on two levels, the kitchen was built to be replicated, and it has right. been replicated dozens of times. But you're correct that, that every community is going to have food waste, every community is going to have need, and every community is going to have need for uh, restaurant industry, hospitality industry workers. Uh, so we, we, we really focus our, our energy there, um, putting people in a, in a place where they can get a job. But what's really important about the culinary program, it doesn't happen in the kitchen, it doesn't happen while you're holding a knife, it doesn't happen while you're standing at a stove, it happens in the classrooms when we, we work with what we call our empowerment skills, life skills, soft skills, right. um, and that uh, is, is the key. Showing up on time. Showing up on time. Dress. Attitude, self-worth, uh, conflict resolution, anger management, uh, all of these things. Really, and, and even more than that, I think the most powerful class we have is where we start every morning. We call it our self-empowerment session with the students. And these are very focused classes, about an hour and a half each, and they really challenge the students to confront why they're with us to begin with. And I will tell you, the students loathe those classes. They hate them in the beginning. But almost to a one, every, by the time they graduate, and we have a brunch every graduation morning, the best, best days of the year, and the students get up and talk about their journey, and almost every one of them, I've been through 50 some of these now, will say, uh, I hated that class, but I know I came to love it, it came to be my favorite part, and I know if I didn't have that, I wouldn't be graduating today. And so that might not be the piece that's gonna help them get the job, but it is absolutely the piece that's gonna help them keep that job and work, turn that into a career and ultimately uh, sustain not only themselves, but their families and break this cycle of poverty. And the hard work is coming from the inside. You provide the context, the context of in which together people have to confront, it's not going to be an easy process. Absolutely, and this is you know, something we talk about all the time, and again, very basic and fundamental to the kitchen, is that, again, breaking this old charity model. One group on one side, better, whatever metric you want to use, rich, poor, smarter, whatever it is, helping this group over here, and thank goodness this group is here doing it. Again, focusing on the, the, the redemption of the giver, not the liberation of the receiver. Here, we're all around the same table. And, and we realize that this, all this work needs to be done together, whether you're a, a lawyer from the suburbs, a, a high school kid coming in from Kansas to volunteer with us, a crack addict, or the President of the United States. We're all doing the same things around the same table uh, and understanding that it's only together that we're going to make change, but we're only going to get there, particularly with the students, uh, if we're ready and if we're willing to accept that, to say to ourselves, this is, I need to make a fundamental change in my life right now if I want to move forward, and I don't want to go back to prison, I don't want to go back to the streets, I don't want to go back to the shelter. Who are your board, who are your staff? Uh, well, our, our board are members of the community who have been involved with the kitchen in one way or another. Uh, we have chefs, we have bankers, we have folks who own catering companies, uh, we have lawyers, uh, really some PR folks, just a, a wide range of people throughout the community who uh, enjoy the work we do and, some, and want to be a significant part of it. Our staff, uh, and this is one of the beautiful things I believe about the kitchen, uh, about half of our staff are graduates of our job training program. Uh, and this is what makes it work. When There's a, a great sense of meeting people where they are, uh, particularly if you're a student coming in and having gone through perhaps some of these programs, having spent the better part of your adult life in prison, uh, having battled addiction for decades, uh, never having a job, and now you're in your mid-40s or 50s. Uh, and, and to come in and to know that the people you're going to be working with and that you're going to be around were in the exact same situation. It's not someone thinking they understand and thinking they want to help you. It's people coming together and, and doing this work together. And I think, too, the staff, and I would include myself in this uh, category, 
who may be, who, who were fortunate enough through no fault of our own not to have grown up in some of those circumstances, uh, having ha had grown up in, in wonderful, safe communities, great family, gone to great schools, still, uh, that didn't prevent me from making some bad and some reckless decisions over the course of my life, but always had, I always had someone to put me back on track. Um, but all of us, no matter how we, we're, we're all looking for something more. You know, we, we, we often say that everyone who comes to the kitchen is a little broken, and, and we're looking for something that has more meaning. Uh, and I think that's true not only with our students, but our, our staff and, and a lot of the volunteers as well. Well, aren't we all a little broken? Aren't Absolutely. we all a little idiosyncratic? Aren't we all, don't we all have weaknesses and, and foolhardy things that we've done? And, and to separate ourselves from others who also have done fool, foolhardy things, it's just a, it's just a disservice. Well, it, and, it, and it's so easy to, to create those dichotomies. And, right. and really that's what has in many ways ripped this country apart. Uh, th that we're so willing and it's so easily done to create these categories and, and to separate people when really the hard work is bringing people together. That's easy. You know, the, the e it's easy to pull people apart. It's easy to buy into stereotypes. It's easy to say that's the way things are. Uh, what we like to do at the kitchen is, is, is say, you know, we see this, we know it's wrong, Changing it might be hard, but that's what we're going to do. We, we want to do the things that people say really can't be done. And whether that's training felons or using donated food to, to provide meals to empower agencies, to feed locally sourced scratch cooked meals to school kids in economically underserved areas in the city, to, to, to put fresh fruits and vegetables and healthy packaged snacks in corner stores in the f city's food deserts. All these things people said can't be done. You don't want to bother. And there's no real reason. Uh, and it, particularly once you've seen the success we've had, uh, that, that you sh we should think or say that or certainly accept it and settle for that. It's, 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 it's just not going to move us anywhere. And the thing that I really love about what you're doing is you're taking the creativity of the community as a whole. It's the people who uh, have the need are also supplying the solution and the energy to the solution. Maybe, um, maybe they, they, they receive the service and later on they give back. There are uh, members of the business community, um, uh, food service organizations, chefs, caterers, and so on and so forth, who want to not have a miserable uh, experience in their environment and, and, and are contributing in that way and are helping to convert. There are professional people who have some time to, co uh, to, to give or some money to give. Right. And, and the community itself, as a community, is taking care of itself and strengthening itself. Absolutely, and all of those people, again, coming together, and, and this is what you just said, is a key piece to the understanding of, of what we like to think of as this new idea of charity. This isn't charity. You know, this isn't something that's left over at the end of the year that we're doing good. You know, sure, is it good? Yes. Is it right? Absolutely. We're far more interested in doing what's smart, uh, and, and that's what we want people to focus on. You know, not that we're good people or that we're you know, ethical or moral, we're, we're smart because this is just, this is economics. Poverty is crazy expensive. It's bankrupting our country. Uh, incarceration, addiction, some of the most, ex these are ex way more expensive than all these crazy wars we're fighting. And, and yet we're not confronting these things head on. Uh, and, and so that, that bringing the community together, even, even if, and maybe not even if, but hopefully in, in a, uh, out of a sense of enlightened self-interest. You know, I, I often say that People ask, why do you do this? I, I do it because I'm selfish. You know, I, I see some horrible pain and, and um, problems in our community, in our country, and, and I don't want my children to grow up in that world. And, and if we can be part of at least making people aware of this and elevating the discussion, I mean, ultimately that's what we're trying to do at the kitchen is elevate the discussion, get people to, to start thinking about these other things and lure them in through the guise of hunger. You know, we, we often think of the kitchen as a Trojan horse, and everyone can understand hunger's bad, hunger's wrong, people shouldn't be hungry. Okay, let's go feed poor people. And then when they come in and they work side by side with men and women who have been in prison, who have been addicted, who have been abused, uh, and, and see what they're doing now, they leave thinking, oh my God, this, is, this was A, not what I was bargaining for, and B, now I'm really going to have to start thinking a little differently when I go back to my community and I hear people talking about those people or making these assumptions and say, well, once you're in prison, you're done. You, you, you can't, leopard can't change his spots, whatever cliche you want to use. Uh, 
But when you're in there doing it inside this Trojan horse of ours, people are forced to confront these stereotypes uh, and break down these barriers. And that's what we're hoping will, again, continue to go outside out of the kitchen. Mike Curtin, thank you so much for sharing the experience of DC Central Kitchen. Thank you so much for your work and thank you so much for your insights. It's been my pleasure, thank you. Thank you.